Hi church, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to dive into one of the most talked about passages in all of the New Testament. Philippians uh, chapter 2 verses 6 through 11. Let's be honest, we're probably going to be looking at, at this passage for the next two or three devotions that I share. There's just there's so much going on here. It's essentially the theological heart of Paul's letter to the Philippians. I love uh, the way that the, the contemporary scholar Michael Gorman talks about it. He calls it Paul's master story. That is, this is what God is up to in, in Christ. Not only is it what God's up to in Christ, uh, it's the story you and I are in, invited to participate in. It's not some, so much something which we uh, read and agree uh, to, but it's something we conform our lives to like a script we live out and share with the world. I remember the last time we started, uh, the last time we, we started with verse 5, have this mind among you which is yours in Christ Jesus. In verse 6, he goes on uh, to detail the kind of mindset that, that Christ had. He says, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I thought we would start out today by unpacking and, and highlighting some of, of Paul's theology or with Paul's Christology as we find it. The first thing that, that Paul tells us is that Christ was in the form of God and did not, uh, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. A better phrase uh, then grasped would be taken advantage of. Christ did not consider his equality with God something to be taken advantage of or exploited for his own purposes. Implicit in this is the assertion that Christ actually was equal to God. Here Paul is he's talking about Christ's pre-existence. Christ as the second person of, of the Trinity, the, the Son, is co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father. From there, he goes on to speak of Christ's incarnation in verse 7, of Christ taking on flesh. And then he speaks of Christ's crucifixion in verse 8, his ascension and exaltation in verse 9, and ultimately speaks of his Christ's future role as the judge of all things in verses 10 and 11. In a few brief lines, Paul sums up what, what needs to be known about Christ. Now, is this exhaustive? No. It says nothing about the signs and wonders that he performed or the things that Christ taught. It says nothing of Christ's ongoing priestly role as our intercessor in heaven. But could you share this? Could you share this good news with a friend or a family member? Maybe share it with a coworker. Could you share this and feel confident that you clearly portrayed the person of Jesus? You sure could. So what's stopping you? When was the last time you introduced someone to the person of Jesus? May God open the door and give you the opportunity and boldness to make an introduction. May the grace of our Lord be with you.